This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, April the 18th, 2019. It's the feast day of Saint Perfectus, which in Spanish is Santo Perfecto, which is a tough name to live up to. He was a Spanish martyr, one of the so-called martyrs of Cordoba, whose story is told by Saint Eulogius. This was during the Muslim occupation of Spain in the 9th century. In Cordoba at the time, Christianity was tolerated by the occupying Moorish government, and Perfecto was a monk and an ordained priest. In 850, two local Muslim men set a public trap. They walked up to Perfecto in a public place and loudly asked whether Jesus or Muhammad was the greater prophet. He tried to walk away. It was an obvious trap. They told him to be honest and that there would be no retribution. They swore. Again, Perfecto saw through this, but what could he do? And so he told them in Arabic that Muhammad was a false prophet and a pervert for seducing his son's wife. The two who had swore not to harm him stepped aside and Perfecto was arrested by other men who overheard. He was tried and convicted and beheaded today in 850 AD. His final words were to bless Christ and condemn Muhammad and the Quran. He was the first of the martyrs of this era, but surely not the last. Today in 1909 in Rome, Pope Pius X beatified Saint Joan of Arc. She would be canonized 11 years later by Pope Benedict XV, but this day was a big deal. Jeanne d'Arc was a 15th century girl who claimed divine visions. She said she was visited by St. Michael the Archangel, by St. Margaret, and by St. Catherine of Alexandria. They instructed her to support, morally and militarily, King Charles VII, who was fighting the French toward the end of the Hundred Years' War. Modern folks have tried to claim that she was schizophrenic, hearing voices which just weren't there. But her age, her gender, and her military accomplishments make that a hard pill to swallow. Joan was incredible on the battlefield, but that she was allowed to be present, let alone lead armies, is so unusual and out of character for the French at the time that her existence is harder to believe than her mystical visions. And yet she was real, and she led the battles that sustained France through the late Middle Ages. She was ultimately captured in battle and condemned by the English on charges ranging from sexual immorality to witchcraft. She was burned at the stake in May of 1431 at the age of 19. That was after eight hugely important military campaigns that she led. Joan was famously retried in 1455, 24 years after her death, and she was acquitted of all charges and declared a martyr. In the 16th century, when the Catholic League was fighting against the Muslim invaders to the east, Joan of Arc became a symbol and a patron of their armies. Today in 1923, the house that Ruth built, Yankee Stadium, opened its gates for the first time to the Boston Red Sox. At 3 p.m., composer and conductor John Philip Sousa walked out onto the field and led the 7th Regiment Band in the Star Spangled Banner. A parade of players and dignitaries followed, including the babe himself, who was presented with an oversized bat. New York Governor Al Smith threw out the first pitch, and the Yanks beat the Red Sox that afternoon 4-1, with Ruth smashing a three-run homer into right field. After the game, reporters asked Ruth what he thought of the new field, and he said simply, some ball yard. Finally today in 1930, the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, began their evening report with an unusually honest statement. They said simply, there is no news, and played a half hour of piano music. Of course, there's more to the story. It turns out there was a bit of a row between the radio and print news media, and for several years it was illegal for radio to repeat a report on what the news had already covered. Obviously there were issues with these laws and they were overturned, but not before some delightfully British passive aggression. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.